the eighth chapter, familiar scripture. Starting at verse 40. Of course, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. I thank God for all the online lookers this morning. If you could turn with, to Luke, the eighth chapter, starting at verse number 40. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. When you have it, say amen. And the word of God reads, On the other side of the lake, the crowds welcome Jesus because they have been waiting for him. Is anybody waiting on Jesus this morning? Mm. Oh, my God. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at his feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. And Jesus went with him. He was surrounded by the crowds. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years. So we have a 12 year old daughter and a woman who's been troubled for 12 years, like some of us right now. Been battling, struggling with something for 12 long years. And she was struggling with constant bleeding. And she could find no one, I mean no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, he touched the friend, the fringe, or y'all translation may say the hem of his robe or garment. And the Bible says immediately the bleeding stopped. And then Christ said, who touched me? Oh my God, do you got faith to get his attention this morning? Are you here in body, but are you there in spirit? Come on somebody. Mm. He said, who touched me? Everyone denied it. And Peter said, master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. Mm. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me. See, it's a touch and then there is a touch. Come on, y'all stay with me. I'm taking my time. If there's a touch and then there is a touch. Oh. This touch got his attention. Mm. Lord have mercy. He said, for I felt healing power go out of me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell on her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. 48 say, daughter, he said to her, Jesus, your faith mixed with desperation <laughs> oh my God has made you well he said go in peace father we thank you Lord I decrease so that you can increase Lord get me out of the way and teach your people with substance with accuracy and courage most of all father God reclaim and save somebody that don't know you reclaim every man woman or child that may have drifted may have lost their excitement, may have lost their passion. Father God, to seek you. Your word admonishes us that if we seek, we shall find. If we knock, the door will be open. If we ask, we shall receive. But we got to do it in faith. So Lord, I thank you, Lord, that we get to do business in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to attempt to finish where I started before I went to Chicago and and we're going to talk a little bit. In this text, though, this woman, of course, we are familiar with the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all are familiar with the woman with the issue of blood? Okay. Can I tell you, for all, everybody that raised your hand, even if you didn't raise your hand, we all need healing somewhere. I don't care if you heard it 600 times a day. I guarantee you when the Spirit of God searches you and I, he will find. Notice I said he will find something that you need help with. Do anybody need help this morning? Yes. Okay. Mm. This woman, my God, is dealing with a situation that she cannot handle by herself. Uh, let me stop right there. It ain't going to get better until you give it to him. You trying to fix it, and it still ain't got fixed. So as the children will say, duh, 
Don't you think that it's time for you to, to allow Jesus into the situation? And it, don't you think it's time for you to give Jesus access at the very thing that you need help with? Have you tried Jesus? The old Baptist saints would say, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. Have you talked to the only one that can truly fix anything that may be vexing or troubling you? Really talk. Have you tried Jesus? Have you gave Jesus permission to come into your situation that may be troubling you or vexing you? My God, and give him an opportunity, heaven, an opportunity to make a difference in your life. And then when you do that, I promise you, if you do it by faith, then when you hear the word, he able. See, they have a new meaning to you than other just words, my God, because I can get back into worship and think about all the people in this church that I know off the top of my head, my God, that God has done some things that they couldn't do within their own strength. They tried. I tried. They tried, and they couldn't do it. But God is able. But you got to be willing to come to Jesus. The woman of God tried everything, but she didn't try Jesus. When she decided that I have done it all, I've tried it all, I've been everywhere, could nobody help me, I got to go to the one person. Sometimes God got to allow you to go out there and spend up all your money, cause yourself a whole lot of pain, take a whole lot of time. This woman been dealing with a 12-year-old symptom that God had the power to fix and heal in instant. Are you holding on to something and dealing with something that God has the power to heal instantly? Are you struggling in an area in your mind to where if you do like the Bible says in Romans 12, 1, my God, allow the word of God to renovate, transform, renovate your mind. The, the peace that has escaped you. God said, peace I will give you. He don't have to give you peace because when you really connected to Christ, he is peace. So truth be told, let me help some of us that, that, that uh, from a kingdom perspective, not a church perspective, because I'm not a church man, I'm a kingdom man. And so therefore, let me help you understand something. When you fully embrace Christ, when you have a vibrant, alive relationship, and you are properly connected with Christ, anything that you need, all you got to do is access it, and he will release it. But you got to access it in faith. Are y'all with me so far? And so this woman of God as teaching has and will teach us a lot of significant principles because God has allowed some of us to linger in stuff that he's been ready to deliver you from, but you have not brought it to him. And see, you got to understand, according to Zechariah, was it four and six? He said, it's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit. See, some of the things that we are dealing with can only be, you can only get free from, I healed from, I delivered from through the spirit. Flesh, birth flesh, and spirit, birth spirit. Can I help us understand this? None of us is perfect. None of us has arrived. I'm learning every day. My wife points stuff out to me on the regular. That's real talk. I'm just transparent. That's a whole lot of stuff this pastor got to work on. But I guarantee you, I ain't what I used to be. I bet you that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're going to title this sermon, as y'all familiar, this be part two of it for those, for the video, my God, we're going to shift and push, because that's what she had to do. See, it's one thing to know what your problem is, it's another thing to push to the problem solver. I said, it's one thing to know what your problem is, it's another thing to push to the problem solver. If, is anybody want to get to Jesus this morning? Okay, okay. So let's look at the personal problem that this woman had. Put that on the screen. Point number one. She had this personal problem, my God. And like many of us, we all got personal problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hers, just true, hers just happened to be in the book. <laughs> According to verse 41 and 42, Jesus was already engaged in a conversation with someone else. Of course, Jairus' daughter, the man of God, the local synagogue. He was a, he was a worker in the local house to bring some context. My God, he took her business in God's kingdom in the temple, and, and his daughter was, was troubled. She was uh, at the point of death and so forth, and, uh, and Jairus came and fell down at the feet of the man of God. Mm, that's another point right there. Sometimes you got to get to his feet. Oh, my God. And he needed some help. There are certain situations that some of us are encountering right now that only Jesus can help you with. This man knew, though he worked in the temple, porting or probably in, and made sure stuff was all right, Stephen, my God, but he knew, my God, that I got a situation that can't nobody in this church help me with but God. Uh, and so he went to him, my God, and he was already on his way uh, to see about Jairus' daughter. But this woman, 
Mm -hmm. Was still uh, needed. This woman still needed a healing. Come on, are y'all with me so far? And we should be encouraged by this right here. He was on his way, as I taught y'all two Sundays ago, to do a miracle, and the woman came up behind him and got a miracle. So what that tells me that our Lord and Savior is never too busy. He's never too busy, no matter what he's engaged in, no matter what he's doing. He still, my God, is all powerful and all knowing. He's still all able to do what you need him to do for you, no matter what he's doing. Never think that you can't call him up. Never think that you can't access him. My God, he's dealing with billions of people on earth, but he's never too busy. Quit telling yourself that God is too busy for you. He was on his way to do a miracle, and he did a miracle. Are y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. So up on the point number one, let's look at this issue. Write down A up on the point number one. Let's look at this issue of blood that the woman of God had. This means that she was hemorrhaging from her body constantly. And we are aware of that. My God, in this case, she had been struggling for 12 long years. Now, now ladies, I got to be careful because the babies is in her. But I can imagine, and you can go with me in the spirit, my God, uh, bleeding for 12 years. I want y'all to understand what this woman, this is just not no any type of miracle. Struggling, bleeding consistently for 12 long years. Mm, 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 mm. As a result of, of, of this, she was socially separated. I'm going to say that right there. Because of her physical condition, according to the Jewish law and the Jewish custom, my God, she could not associate with her family. If she was married, her husband, she could have no contact with her children. She couldn't be in the midst of the crowd of people like this. She wasn't supposed to be in the midst of Jesus because she was considered unclean. It's almost like she had leprosy. So therefore, she had already defied all the odds because she was in a place <laughs> that religious folks said she couldn't go. <laughs> but when you when faith, my God, when you're desperate, my God, for a healing, uh, you don't care about no rules. You don't care about no laws. Uh, I, I done tried everything, my God, but I ain't trying Jesus. I got to get to Jesus. So she was socially disconnected, isolated, like some of us, even though we're in the crowd. Feeling alone, like some of us that's sitting in a crowd today. Ooh. No contact, no companionship, Oof. no flow, because she's all alone. So as we, as we teach a man, no gender left to himself is doomed for destruction. So just imagine if you had nobody to talk to. And every time somebody seen you coming, they skeeted, or skirted, sorry, to the other side because they couldn't have no contact with you. Just imagine people looking at you and going the opposite direction. Just imagine some of your friends that you sit by side right now, my God, find out that you're dealing with this type of sickness and they begin to do like I'm doing right here. And you don't even know. They steady moving. It just ain't manifested yet. They're getting away from you because they know, my God, that they can't have contact with you because anything that you touch, man or woman, you will defile. This woman was socially disconnected. She was cut off from society. That's a cold place to be in. It's like when I was in prison years ago when they take you out of population and lock you up in DU. My God, where they, they take you away from all contact with another human being and lock you in a little cell and it's just you and it's pitch dark off in there and the only light you get, my God, is when they open up the thing to feed you like a dog. When they try to break you, they take you away from human contact, from any socialization, my God, and lock you up to yourself. And then when you left to yourself, usually you got to come face to face with yourself or you lose your mind. So this woman was in a cold mental condition, a cold mental state of mind because she had no contact. She had no one that was touching her. She had no one, baby, that was speaking into her life. She had no one that she could cry to. She had no one that she could talk to because anybody that was around her will be considered unclean. So she had to fight this battle for 12 years by herself. Have you been trying to do that? Have you been trying to fight your battles by yourself? Mm. People did not even want to be around her because they couldn't according to the law. She was also spiritually disconnected. Let me lay this. So because she was bleeding, she couldn't be amongst the people. So that means she had no fellowship. She couldn't come to the synagogue. She couldn't come to church. She couldn't be nowhere amongst us. She was disconnected socially and disconnected spiritually. 
Now, we could be super spiritual and say, well, she had a Bible, which as we know, she didn't have no Bible. My God, and say, well, it's just my relationship with God is personal anyway. I don't need nobody. You know, see, that's all pride and arrogance. That's not the moral of the story. This woman of God was spiritually disconnected. She had no flow, my God, in the natural. She had no connection in the spiritual, and she had no flow in the natural. And so she was in a tough, tough place. Some of us is in that place today, too, right now, if you be truthful and honest with yourself. My God, because she was hemorrhaging, my God, uh, it made her ceremonially, according to the law, unclean, and anyone who touched her will be also ceremonially unclean. According to the book of Leviticus, write this down. Let's take some of this to the old law and put some context on it. My God, according to Leviticus 15, 25 through 27, if a woman has a flow of blood for many days that is unrelated to her menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is considered ceremonially unclean. And during her menstrual period, the woman would be unclean as long as the discharge continued. So guess what? We're talking about 12 years. So this woman was considered socially and spiritually unclean for 12 long years. Years. That's a long time. I'm trying to lay it because I want you to feel it. I want you to get the image of being disconnected. No contact, my God. Hard to communicate with God, my God, because, because you're spiritually, my God, and socially disconnected because of something that you didn't use all your money to try to get cured for. And ain't nothing worked. I want you to know something. Let me give you a little revelation. God set things up because he's in control. Uh, Spend all your money, and then when, because then you know that your money is not the answer to all things. Uh, talk to whoever you want to talk to, and God will let you know that he or she ain't the answer to what you got. Sometimes God's will create stuff because he's trying to reveal himself to you at another level. <laughs> oh my God, said sometimes God will create stuff because he's trying to reveal who he is to you at another level. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. So God would allow you and I to exhaust all of our fleshly natural resources, my God. Oh, my God, because he's the one. That wants the glory. Because everything that God does, he wants the glory for. So he'll let you and I run through everything. Run through your 401k. Run through your cars. Whatever it is that you depend on. Glad I take it all. Now you ready to come? Sometimes God got to allow us to get to use up every uh, uh, opportunity we have. My God. And then he said, okay, now you ready for me. Because many of us depended on too many natural things and it interferes with spiritual things. We depended on our job. My God, we're more faithful committed to our job than we are to God. We study any work, any time they give a new, a new system, if they add a new system into the, to the company, my God, and do away with the old system, you take all your time and study to learn the new system. But you won't take time to study and learn the system of the kingdom. So, uh, you, uh, come on, think about it. If it consists of our natural job, because you know what? We really, really, really believe that our natural job is truly our source. That's why we get so much attention. So that's why we prioritize our natural job over the kingdom. And not knowing that the consuming fire has the power to allow you to walk into your job. And they say, we are closing down this company today. So all your faith that was in your job, now you don't have a job. And they're not going to give you no service back. And you'll think that the world is over. God said, nope, I'm teaching you. Because God said, I'm a jealous God. This is principles, y'all. And I will not share my glory with nobody. No thing. Nothing. And when God has a great, well, because all of us has a strong destiny and a great purpose, my God. And God is a just God. He loves us. And so, therefore, if something is getting in, interfering with your devotion, your loyalty to God, it makes God jealous. And so he's coming after of it. He's coming after of it. So we need to think about what are we esteeming? What, are, do, what do we have in place, in God's place, when it should be God? Be careful, because I can imagine he has given warning after warning. After warning, giving you grace and mercy for you to change it so you don't have to take it from you. Uh, it's hard when God corrects us. But he loves us enough, my God, he will give us warning before he do something. Just how he operate. So don't miss the warning. But again, this woman was ceremonially unclean. And she had struggled for 12 long years. She couldn't touch nothing. She had no contact, no social contact. She was considered an outside. Her disease was deemed incurable. Oh. Doctors could not help her. Friends could not help her. Money could not help her. She had an issue, and many of us have the same, some of these same issues. Money couldn't help her. Doctors couldn't help her. She had a real issue. You and I have real issues that socially and spiritually 
Can't nobody help you but God. When I say spiritually, no matter how much Bible you quote, no matter how much Bible you know, we still got issues. We still need the touch of God. We still need to encounter God. Let me give you this right here. A casual contact with Christ isn't the same as a desperate reach of faith. Casual contact with Christ isn't the same as, de as a desperate reach of faith. See, some of us will stay in conditions until we get desperate enough. And then when you got desperations, I taught y'all two weeks ago, and faith come together, my God, until you really got a real need, you won't really exercise and operate in faith. Long as you and I think that we can do it, we in control, I got this, me against the world, whatever you want to put on it, we would never try to invite Christ, the kingdom, into a situation as long as we think that we got it. And so God is such a patient God, the word of God said. So he just stay right over here and say, here it is, you've been struggling with this for 12 years, you should have been free, free from this 11 years ago. Seriously. But you don't want me to get involved, so I got to allow your will to be done. Your will, not his will. And so are we staying in situations that God meant for us to get out of a long time ago? See, casual contact every now and then. Don't you know when you open up your Bible, you have in contact with God? This is God in word form. You don't believe me? I ain't got time to mess with it. Just read the book of John, the first chapter. My God, this is word form. So anytime you open up this, you come in contact with God. And so the more you come in contact with this, it moves from being casual to intimacy. Oh, my God. And see, come on, somebody. When you read your Bible, it brings you into an intimate relationship with God. Oh, then you start taking on his mannerisms, my God. And you look back three months now, you don't look like you ain't struggling with some of the same things you were struggling with when you first started opening up your Bible. That's why the Word of God tells you to be renovated by the renewing of your mind. Oh, my God. When you read your Bible, my God, it began to, de it began to wash away all the declutter and clutter that we have inside of our thought process. Many of our battles and many of our sickness and many of our disease and many of our habits and many of our hangups is right here in our belief system. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You get your mind out, your whole life is coming out. Mm, we self-sabotage right here in our mind. We stay sick right here in our mind. Yeah, yeah. It ain't got nothing to do with your fear. Some of us are sick in our body because we sick in our mind. Because the Bible says, as a man thinking, so he becomes. My God, if you accept who God say you are, you are, as I teach y'all, y'all fearfully one of your kings and queens, you have dominion. You, we quote Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Then if you believe that, then why are you not getting free? Because you, got to, you can quote scripture, but you got to mix faith with scripture. Oh, it's not enough to quote it, baby. You got to have faith to see, it extra, to see it manifest. See, this woman had enough faith after she tried everything. She said, God is waiting on some of y'all because some of you still got some more stuff you're depending on. You ain't ready to really come to him. You may come casually, but what you got going on and what I got going on, casually ain't going to get it. The level of healing, deliverance, and restoration, and things you need God to do in your life and in your children and grandchildren's life and all that, a, a casual contact ain't going to do it. Coming to church... Once a month ain't going to do it. Reading your Bible every three months ain't going to do it. Come on. Praying when you feel like it ain't going to do it. The only praying when you're driving to work, that ain't going to get it. That's casual. Refusing to hit your knees, my God, because you watch the TV all day, and then you want to get in your bed and close your eyes and say, Lord, thank you for another day, and go to sleep. That ain't going to do it. And that's a whole lot of Christians. That's why they're powerless, and they can't say no to the flesh when the enemy attacks. Because we're not spending time. That casual relationship, oh my God, God is cutting, I'm coming, I'm coming. That casual relationship that many of us have, ain't going to get it. Because you need God. Many of you are desperate, but you're too casual. Desperate, but you're too casual. Desperate, but you're too casual. The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, blessed is the man who hunger. And thirst not the righteousness for they shall be filled. Oh, don't tell me God ain't able. Huh? It ain't nothing that you're dealing with that God can't fix, baby. I don't care what it is. I don't care how high it is or how low it is. If you seek God, God is able, my God, to shift, my God, any given time, my God. And when you shift, you got to push. Anything worth hurting, you're going to have to pay a price for. We won't pay no price for spirituality, but we'll pay a price for the flesh. We, we don't make no excuses for the flesh, but we make all kinds of excuses spiritually. Mm. 
Doctors couldn't help her. Can I help you with this? Everybody that's smiling isn't happy. Mm -hmm. Everybody, my God. <laughs> oh, everybody fixed up isn't content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have tears that we don't show. That's me. We got a lot of, amen, Sister Johnson. We have a lot of hidden wounds that we won't. We try to hide from Jesus like he don't know the wounds you and I got. So this woman had to make a decision. Either I'm going to let the rules, either I'm going to let, because I'm unclean ceremonially and I'm not supposed to be amongst the people, or I'm going to let people interfere what I so desperately need. Am I going to listen to the opinions of people? Am I going to perceive stuff from people? Am I going to let people interfere with what I so desperately need because I'm tired of dealing with this? When I've been hearing about this man that has caused people that was dead to come back to life, he didn't fed 5,000, not including the children. Oh, my God. He didn't stretch out a man's arm that was withered. He made it straight. Come on. Oh, my God. He didn't heal. He didn't deliver. I would heard about this man, and now I didn't went everywhere I could to try to get my God healed. I didn't exhausted all of my money. I didn't went to every human being that I possibly could go to that I felt in my mind, keyword felt in my mind, there's a way to see me right to a man that leaves to destruction. I felt that that person could help me. I felt that she could help me. I felt that pastor could help me. I felt that Dominique could help me. I went to everybody, my God, and now this man that I've been hearing about all in the city that showed up and you mean to tell me I've been struggling for 12 years and I done went flat broke and you're going to tell me that a law? You're going to tell me I can't come get to the healer? The only one that can help me? The devil is a lie. I don't care nothing about your religion. I don't care nothing about your laws. My faith, my God, is on trial and I'm desperate, my God, to get healed. So I don't care less about your rules. I care less. If you don't want to be around me, make a, make part the red seat because I got to get to Jesus. Oh, he done came too close now. Oh, I'm too desperate for him right now. I'm tired of suffering with this pain. I'm tired of being socially disconnected, spiritually disconnected. I got to get to Jesus. So I'm not going to let your laws. I'm not going to let your perception. I'm not going to let your opinion. I'm not going to let no synagogue rulers. I'm not going to let no officials. I'm not going to let the Torah. Nothing stop me from getting to Jesus. I can't let nothing stop me. See, I don't know about y'all, but that happened to be my mindset. April the 30th for 1995. My brother sent me to five treatment centers. Countless and countless and countless of jail and prison time. Thinking that this time I'm going to be all right. God said, you know what, I'm going to allow you to experience treatment centers and 12 steps and all of those type of stuff, but that it will not be the way that you get delivered. See, because God know you better than you know yourself. And God know me better than I know myself. And God know that I'm a very passionate person. And so if he would allow it, I'm not against, I'm on record, I'm not against uh, celebrate recovery, I'm not against 12 steps, none of that stuff. But God knew that if this man get delivered behind one of these programs, <laughs> He's going to be a, a raving fan for that. And God said, I'm a jealous God. And I can't share my glory. I can't share who I am with 12 steps. Now, I'm not against it, but, but I got to have that. Because <laughs> there's going to be somebody, my God, that's going to get delivered behind that passion, that commitment, my God. So I ain't willing to share it with nobody. Oh, my God. I ain't willing to share So what am I trying to say? I'm not trying to make it about me. I'm trying to make you understand. I'm trying to make you understand. God got to let some of y'all get to where y'all ain't got nothing. Then here he come. I got to that point where I was desperate. I didn't know Christ because I didn't grow up in church. I knew of Christ because of my grandma. Oh, but I knew enough to get down on my knees. Oh, and I know that my grandma used to sing that song at 1916 North Elwood, and she used to sing a song called Have a Little Talk with Jesus. And that's all I can remember. Tell him all about your troubles, hear my faintest cry, and answer by and by. That's all I know. Some of y'all, but that's enough to get me where I'm at today. I had a little talk with Jesus because I was desperate for him. I, oh, I used everything I could to get clean and sober, and I couldn't get free. But when I called on Jesus, 
See, some of y'all need to understand you need to have a little talk with Jesus. Quit having a little talk with programs. Quit having a little talk with church. Quit having a little talk with your sister. Quit having a little talk with you. Talk to Jesus. Don't even talk. Have a little talk with Jesus. See, this woman was willing to say, you know what? I care less about the Torah. The five books of the Bible. I care less about that. I'm desperate. I'm tired of suffering. And so she was willing to shift and then push. She's willing to sidestep the law and push towards the, the healer. She was willing to do the impossible. She was willing to look like a fool to be healed. She was willing, my God, to even risk her, uh-oh, thank you, her life, because she could have been killed to be healed. Who are you willing to wish your life to be healed? See, there's a whole lot of principles inside of her. Mm, mm, mm. But I love that she, her faith. If you think about it, thank you, Holy Ghost. Baby, she had faith in doctors and everything. And while she was having faith in everything and in the flesh, God was doing miracles, signs, and wonders. And so she heard about the person that has the power to do what her money couldn't do. Can I help you? Money is not the answer to all things. I watched my brother. I tell the story because I want to bring context. When my sister, Anita Curl Peoples, was battling cancer, on that breathing machine. My brother, John, and Monty had just flew to D Dallas, Dallas and uh, uh, to go down there for whatever John was going to do, and soon they got off the plane, they had to get right back on the plane, Pastor Champ, and come right back to the hospital. My wife was there. And I watched my brother slide down the wall. He got in the corner, because Pookie was breathing on that thing. And slide down the corner. He said, all the money I got, I watched him just slide down, me and her. Couldn't save my grandmother and couldn't save my sister. They went to the best hospitals that cancer could afford all down in Houston. And Melvin, his money, could not save his grandmother, which is my grandmother, and his sister, which is my sister. And I watched him cry. So that made me right then. Money is not the answer to all things. God is the answer to all things. Oh my God, somebody need to shout. Ah! Oh Jesus. Some of y'all depending on your money, you depending on your job, you depending on your finances. I promise you money is not the answer. Christ is the answer. Somebody need to catch that. Because your God is your money. It ain't Christ. Oh, something going on for Christ. Don't leave your path. Stand up and give God some glory. Come on, stand up and give God some glory. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Mm, mm, mm. So when she decided to shift, when she decided not to let Leviticus 15 verses 25 through 27, oh my God, interfere with her healing. <laughs> Watch this, shift and push. Pastor, when she decided not to let Leviticus 15, 25 through 27 interfere with her healing, she decided to push. Point number two, she pushed persistently. So I see when you're trying to get something from God, there's going to always be resistance from the enemy. When you're trying to get something from God, y'all listen to me, there's going to always be interference from people. People will always try to distract you from your healing. People will always try to discourage you and tell you, girl, you ain't going to do nothing. Ain't nobody going to want you. Boy, please, you got a penitentiary record. Ain't nobody going to want you. See, this is how the enemy methodically hinders you. Discourage, frustrate people of faith. Because we believe the world's report over God's report. 
Even though we read in the Bible that God said we can have these things and do these things, we'll let people in the church, outside the church, we even let social media dictate what we will try and what we won't try. This woman said, I'm desperate. I ain't got nothing else to hold on to. I got to get to Jesus. So during the birth of this woman, during birth, if a woman stops pushing, mm, she endangers the life of the baby. Oh my God, I'm trying to teach this thing. And herself. Mm. Oh, some of you ladies, can I just encourage you? Don't stop pushing. Don't stop pushing. Because some of that weight, like when I'm in the gym, you got to push that weight up off of you. And that's what builds the muscles. Uh, don't stop pushing. Don't stop pushing frustration off of you. Don't stop pushing discouragement off of you. Don't stop pushing low self-esteem off of you. Men, push excuses up off of you. Push that thinking less than off of you. Push that prejudice spirit about the white man, this and the white. Push that up off of you. Push that stuff. What's on you that you need to push up off of you? Oh, my God. This woman that God shifted, she said, I don't care nothing about no law. I don't care nothing about no five books of the Torah. I got to get to Jesus. And so after she shifted in her mind, see, first, before she could get to Jesus, she had to shift. She had to make sure that she didn't allow the law to interfere with her healing. What are you allowed to interfere with your healing? Who is what you, who are you allowing? I, this is perfect. This is my, to interfere. I love the spirit. Who is, and what is you allowing? Not the devil, you. Me. What are we, thank you, Holy Ghost, allowing to interfere with our healing? If it's not healing, that business. If it's not the business, reconciliation between mama and daughter and father and son and, come on. What, what is it? Because healing is not just physical healing, even though we're dealing with the story of a physical healing. But healing takes so many forms. What are we allowing to interfere with us getting to Jesus? What, 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 what mountain? What stone? Before Jesus could raise Lazarus from the dead, he told him the disciples rolled away the stone. Even God in the flesh could not heal Lazarus until the stone was removed. Then he spoke and said, come forth, Lazarus. If he just said, come forth, everything in the, day, everything in the grave would have came for him. God is speaking to some Lazarus. But you got to roll away the stone and allow the spirit to come in and speak to you. But this woman pushed, and she was very persistent. Oh, my gosh, she didn't let hang-ups and habits. She didn't let people's opinion and perception stop her. She was desperate because she had nothing else to depend on but God. I thank God. I, I just want to let you know something. I'm still desperate. I know I'm misunderstood, and I know uh, my passion get in the way sometimes, and I know, uh, uh, but I'm just desperate. I promise you, I'm just desperate. I'm just desperate, Sharon. I promise you, I'm just desperate. Because uh, everything is contingent. Everything is contingent. Everything is contingent upon my walk with Christ. I got to share a little bit of that with, of me because I need you to understand. Because many of you don't understand me. I'm just desperate. I'm just like the woman with the issue of blood. I had a cocaine addiction for 13 young years. And I tried everything. Even my family did everything. See, this is not just a story. It's my life. I tried everything and it didn't work until I got to Jesus. See, see, I'm Miss Charlotte. See, 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 I don't just preach stories. I preach my life, baby. Because I'm a living testimony that it can be done. And so I'm just desperate. I'm just desperate. That's all. Why are you? I'm just desperate. I won't be criticized for it. You can, but I'm going on. So let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a bit. Uh, there are times in our life we must continue to push to bring forth what God is developing within us. What do you got on the inside that you need to push out? Who is waiting? What brother-in-law is waiting on you? What sister-in-law is waiting on you? Which one of your sisters, your siblings are waiting on you. Which one of y'all bosses that God didn't give you favor with that gave you interest into their life is waiting on you to really step out and let your life speak more than your words? Who is waiting on you? Who needs your hunger? 
Who needs your persistence? Who needs your consistency? Who needs your study time? Who needs your devotion time? I want us to understand because, see, some of the things that we're dealing with ain't about you. It's about the people that's connected to you. And so God got to allow us to be on trial. Bishop preached a sermon many years ago, many of you need faith on trial. A lot of our faith is on trial because people need to see how you suffer. People need to see you go through stuff because it gives them encouragement that they can go through. Oh, that's why you got to share your testimony. That's why you can't be ashamed to testify about what God has brought you out of because somebody needs your testimony. But many of us allow these things I'm getting ready to talk about to interfere. What were we going? In life. I thank God that this woman was so laser focused. And she got to the point where people's opinion didn't matter. Friends didn't matter. Homegirl, homeboy, don't matter. The set don't matter. Where we grew up at don't matter. Same town, same football team, same basketball team, we were all that don't matter. Some of us has not got what we got need from God because we let other people's opinion matter more than God's. Watch this. Write this down up on the point number two. See, she had to get past and push past people. <laughs> Don't you know people is one of the major deterrents that the devil used to keep us in prison? You ain't never really thought about that. People can be a blessing or people can be a curse to you, even in the church house. So write this down up on the point number two. Number one, she had to push past those that was hesitant. She had to push past those that was hesitant. Why do I say that? Because remember, she was socially and spiritually separated. She was unclean. She was unclean. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, people hesitated by being around her. But she was desperate. She needed something that only God could do. Mm. Are you with me so far? And so therefore, she, all the hesitant people, ask yourself when you begin to look at that inner circle, because as they say, my God, uh, the motivational speakers and so forth, you show me your, your five friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah. Think about your, somebody need to write that down. Look at your five friends and I'll show you your future. <laughs> look who you spend the most of your time with and I'll show you your future. Are you listening to me? And so there, there were some people that didn't want to be associated with her. They, they, so they was hesitant to come in contact with her but she was willing, watch this, to push past those type of people ask yourself, are, are you willing to push past people that uh, are looking everybody smiling at you they really in their spirit is like Whoa. huh you heard about her you know where she come from you know what she did you know what she used to do when she was strung out on drugs? Yeah, that, that's all. Hi, hey, girl, how you, how you doing? And so, don't you know, when you give your life to Christ, people are like they do me still today, 24 years later. He ain't saved. He ain't, he ain't saved. He ain't saved. 24 years later, consistently, he ain't saved. Hesitant. Won't come to the church. Hesitant. Who in your life is hesitant? Who is it that you need to sidestep, shift, and push? Because really, they smiling, but you know they don't mean you well. You know they lightweight hating on you. Come on, y'all need to go with me, church. I'm trying to keep a pastor in control. But who do you need to push past? Who is hesitant in your life that's hindering you? These people didn't want to have no contact with the woman of God, so she pushed past hesitant people. People will keep you from being blessed. Oh, my God. They dragged their feet. They emphasize the negative in every situation. If you got somebody around you that's always telling you, ladies and gentlemen, what you can't do, God, are you sure God told you that? Are you sure he told you that? They, they hesitate because can I help you? Some people need you to stay a chicken because they know if you decide to be an eagle, they got to make a decision to be an eagle or be a chicken. Some people need you to suffer. Some people need you to walk in, in poverty, poverty mentality, because they know that in order to walk, stay in your life, they got to make a decision to go up or they going to stay down. And so they will do everything they can to pull you down and keep you down because they don't want to go up. 
They're too hesitant. They're scared of their future. Some of us, my God, has conditioned our mind. This is all it's going to ever be. I ain't going to never have none. I'm going to always have a piece of a man. I'm going to always have a piece of a woman. I'm going to always be robbing Peter to pay Paul. I'm going to always be avoiding the calls for their, their bill collectors. You got your mind set like that. And people want you around you like that because they need you to stay like that so they don't have to do nothing. When you continue to function beneath who you are, it gives a person in your life an excuse to stay who they are. When you continue to function, my God, like you are, it gives people, my God, my God, an opportunity to stay like they are. So if you function beneath who you are, they get to stay who they are. Some people is hesitant, and they tell you they're always trying to discourage you because they don't want to do what God told them to do. So if I can if I can keep first lady discouraged, I'm gonna do that. If I can keep Sharon discouraged, if I can keep Tanya discouraged, I keep telling them you ain't got to do that. Yeah, then I won't move forward. Is some of you not moving forward because you won't push persistently? I know this is speaking. Some of you have self sabotage because the opinions of people. You love your friends more than you love your destiny. You would rather suffer, smile. And suffer in silence than break camp in advance in the church house. Yeah. Write this down. You got to be willing to push past hurtful people. Hurtful people are usually people that are the closest to you. <sighs> mm. They are the closest to you. The reason why this is in here like this is because if you think about the crowd, the crowd could have stopped her. The law could have stopped her from getting what she desperately needed from God. So you had the law and you had the crowd of people that had the potential to derail this woman's faith and keep her sick for another 12 years. So she conquered one, said, I don't care about the law. I'm going to the person who made the law. This he said, okay, all y'all people that's been uh, telling me, girl, it's going to be okay. Just keep on praying. Just keep on believing. I know, girl, I understand. I'm going through that too. I've been believing God for this right here. No poor talk. No faith, no word off in that. Them is the type of people you got to be willing for a season when you're desperate to disconnect from. People, my God, that don't have no life in them. People that don't push you. People that don't give you air uh, to your wings. Come on, somebody. People that can't help you take flight. People that can't help you soar. People, my God, that's always keeping you on the ground. You got to be willing to disconnect from them people. And don't you know there's all kind of people around us, my God, that's hurting? Some hurting people are more on display than others. Many of us is hurting, but we're hurting silently. And we don't want nobody to know. Because if they find out that what I'm going through, what I'm really dealing with, then they're going to really find out who I am, and I really don't want nobody to know who I am. So I won't talk to nobody. I'll just be in the crowd. And every time one of my sisters talk about soaring, I can't visualize that because I can't see myself in a different situation in life because this has always been my life. I'm sorry. It's not emotionalism today. Can you see yourself past your predicament? Can you see the next five years better than the last five? <laughs> Hurtful people are always trying to make you feel bad. Hurtful people know what buttons to push. That's why you have to be careful who you join with. Because I can help you understand this is where the spiritual warfare comes in at. The enemy has assigned agents. The enemy has agents that are assigned to your life to disrupt everything God is trying to do in your life. The enemy has people, my God, assigned to your life to counterfeit everything God is trying to do. I teach y'all to counterfeit I always show up before the real. Everybody that you meet don't belong in your life. 
That's why when you meet somebody where it's business or whatever, you need to take that to prayer and bash that in prayer. Say, God, am I supposed to do business with this person? Is this person supposed to be in my life in this season? Because they're supposed to be in your life, but it may not be now. It may be five years from now. It may be three years from now. You got to get to the point where you're okay. With the few people that you have. Really, you can't, you can't really manage and, and, and give yourself to over five people no way in a lifetime. I'm talking about really giving yourself to somebody. We got all these people, don't nobody know us. We got a whole phone list of people, don't nobody know us. Mm. Hurt people. How many of y'all, I know some of you might can't do it, but how many of y'all got people that's hurt in your circle? Who thank you. Lord, have mercy. Hurt people don't look for your best. They don't. They don't. They search out the worst in you and then throw it up in your face. Keep in mind, stay with the context. This is a woman that needed a healing. She had to sidestep, shift from all this to get what she needed from Jesus. Even though we can agree with some of the statements that the Spirit of God is making through your pastor, my God, what you going to do about it, though? We can say, I agree, that's what's up. I hear you, pastor, you keep it on the dollar with all that. But what you going to do about the people that's keeping you from getting your healing? See, but remember, she shifted, then she pushed. She pushed enough to get to who she needed and what she needed to get to so she could get a healing. It's not enough to know my problem and not get to the problem solver. Many of us know what we need, but are you persistent and hungry enough to get to Jesus? Seek. Not. It's me. I fail. I'm back at you. I'm knocking. I ain't healed. I ain't delivered. I don't have no peace. I ain't got no financial breakthrough. I'm struggling. Help me. I don't want to do it. Help me, God. Help me. I'm knocking. It's a persistent knock that never stops knocking. Because after God do it for you, you're going to need something else you're going to need him to do for you. You got to push past hurtful people to get what you need from Jesus. You got hurtful people that, is, that are, they are empowered by your failures. By your faults and your weaknesses. They feel empowered. To be able to point out everything that you don't do right. But see, you got, I don't want you to get caught up in that. I want you to see the strategic weapon that the enemy is using to keep you from getting your healing. But it ain't really the enemy. It's us. Because we keep people in our circle that their time has expired. You know they can't handle where you're going. You know she don't won't mean well for you. You know and you done caught her many times lying on you, talking about you, trying to sleep with your husband and everything, but you keep her right there. And so they talk about your faults and everything, but, 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 but at the end of the day, they, they bring up all the negativity about your life, but you won't do nothing about it. This woman did the opposite. She shifted in her mind. Because before you can change, you got to change in your mind. And then, she, then she, after she shifted, she just didn't pursue anything or anybody. She pursued the healer. You got to be willing to pursue the only person that can really help you. Can I stand before you and tell you, I'm not God, neither is she. There's certain things that I can do through Christ, but there's a lot of things I can't do. So you got to go to Jesus. There's certain things that I, as a pastor, can't help you with. It wasn't designed for me to help you. It was a design for me to get you here so God can get you, so you can get there. That's what my purpose is. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It got to do with him. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He gets the glory. Uh-oh, you got to push past, write this down, hateful people. I'm making good time. Hateful people. Uh-oh. Now remember, the crowd. When you have this many people that are sitting in the audience today, so just imagine in Jesus' day, all the thousands of people that was in the crowd, right? Hurting, hateful, and everything else. That did not stop the woman because she had laser, laser focus. She was so desperate, what did nothing matter 
but get into Jesus. You got to keep that type of pursuit. You got to keep that type of hunger. And you know how you keep that hunger? You got to flip these pages. You got to stay on your face. You got to constantly remember that, oh my God, if I let go of the horns of the altar, I'm going to kill myself. If I don't stay connected to Christ, I'm going to mess up. <laughs> if I don't keep my focus, my God, I'll be somewhere where I'm not supposed to be as a man in some other woman's bed. Come on, somebody. If I don't learn how to stay connected to God, my God, I'm going to squander off all my money on righteous living. Oh, my God. Some of you got to get to the understanding, my God, where you understand it's death, life or death. Ain't no plan B. It's, a of, it's all or nothing. And this woman had exhausted everything. So she had nothing else to depend on. That's why she was so desperate. Are you desperate? This morning. How desperate are you? Are you really tired yet? Have you exhausted everything? Are you, are you tired of dragging negative people and hurting people and hateful people? Are you sick and tired of carrying so much weight that you really can't carry it? If people knew, my God, what you went through when you leave your job and you leave the beauty shop or you leave the barber shop and you go home and it's just you, they have no idea the conversations you have with God. Some of us is ready to end it all. We're tired. We're ready to give up. We're ready to give up in every area of our life. We're at that point of desperation. Can I tell you that the only one going to help you is Jesus? Jesus. It's not nothing complex, it's simple. Get to Jesus and you'll be okay. Well, Pastor, I've been hearing that. Hey, come to Christ, everything gonna be all right. God never told you in the world. He said all things are possible to those that believe. When you get to Jesus, you understand that, my God, it takes faith and patience to do the will of God. Don't you know it takes patience and faith mixed with trust to, for God to execute his will in your life. See, when we come to Jesus, we think everything supposed to change now. We want everything to shift now. We want everything to happen now. We want the Red Sea to part now. We want the marriage to be restored now. We want the sons to come back now. We want a job now. We want this now. We want that now. We need it now. We ain't got no patience to allow God to work in our life. So then when stuff don't happen now, then we start questioning. Pastor, I tried all that stuff don't work. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because you can't really try Jesus. Either you win or you ain't. And so God holds the right to, God holds the right to hold up, withhold something from you to see how bad you really want it. He'll withhold stuff from you just to see how bad you really want it. God, when you first come here, we'll bless you. We'll bless your business, bless your home, bless your marriage, bless your children. And all of a sudden, you'll close the heavens. Will you stay hungry then? Will you keep showing up then? Will you walk in love then? Would you become better or would you become bitter? See, God is always training and always teaching you and preparing you for where he's taking you. Oh, my God. For some of y'all, it seems like every time you prayed, you got everything. But now, the heavens have been shut. God is training you. Don't you know God trains you in silence? You talking and God ain't, ain't saying nothing. Oh, but he see you. Scripture, the book of Exodus, he said, I seen from heaven and I heard the misery of my people. And he said he came down to see about his people by raising up Moses, the great deliverer. Hurt, hateful people, they don't necessarily know you. They just hate, you, hate on you. <laughs> they don't know your struggles. They don't know your pain. They don't know the burdens that you endure. They don't really know your story. And they hate on your glory. People, let me help you with this, y'all. And I'm back to need you to live beneath who you are. Because as I stated earlier, and some of you may have missed it, when you decide to break camp and soar, that person that's hating on you, that person that's hesitant, has to make a decision. Either I'm going to soar or I'm going to stay down there with the chickens. Some of you are hanging out with chickens when you should be hanging out with eagles. That's real talk. Some of you can't get your plane off the ground because of the type of people that you're hanging around. You can't get your plane up off the ground, off the runway, because of the type of people that you are hanging around. 
People see you, but they don't know the pain. They don't know your frustrations either. But just keep pushing. In the midst of everything you got going, keep pushing. The woman of God pushed past religion. She pushed past the laws. She pushed past people. She pushed past doubters. She pushed past hurtful people, hesitant people. Come on, somebody. To get what she need. I wonder how many of you to make it where you understand it. Well, sit in your seat when you have an opportunity to get to Jesus. But choose to sit in your seat because you're worried about what they're going to think. See, truth be told, y'all know how, I know how to make the story revelatory. I'm bringing it right here. She pushed past the people. What would you do? How many of you going to walk out of here unhealthy? Hurry. Struggling, struggling another 12 years, dealing with hang ups and habits that you should have been free from. How many of us are going to continue to make excuses about why we can't do what we need to do? Because now church is over. I'd have my casual contact with God. Now I got to get to Friday's. Now I got to get to Applebee's. Now I got to get to Cheddar's. My God, so I cut nothing about my God coming in contact with the only one that can help me. That's Jesus. Because, see, it's my job to bring the word to you and bring you to Christ. Are y'all listening to me? If you never come to Christ, my God, then I have failed. Let me balance that out. Every time somebody comes to the altar, don't mean they're coming because of sin. I teach y'all that all the time. But I can tell you this right here. Everybody in this church is hurting somewhere. Everybody in this church is struggling with something. Everybody in this church got some hangers, some habits, or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to name it, what you going to do about it? The title is Shift and Push. And when she shifted and she pushed, she pushed right to the resource. She pushed right to the solution. She pushed right to the healer. She pushed right to the deliverer. She pushed to the only one that had the means to help her overcome a 12-year-old infirmity. Would you push to him? Will you come to him? She also pushed, write this down in faith. Because you could come as the God get ready to give an altar call, but if you're not coming in faith, you just came. See, I teach you right. When you come, you got to come in faith. When you push, you got to push in faith. When you pray, you got to pray in faith. When you give, you got to give in faith. When you love, you got to love in faith. Everything got to be done in faith. The Bible says the only thing that God received from fleshly men and women is faith. It's my that's the only thing you receive. Whatever you do, you got to do it in faith. When I stand up before you, I'm standing up here by faith. What God brings up out of my spirit, spirit, he's bringing it up out of me through my faith. Faith is the only thing that gets heaven's attention. That's Bible. External action, don't do it. You can get up at your seat, make your way down there, and God said you came in flesh, but you didn't come in faith. So you come down there like Minister Robert taught us, and you bring your flesh down there, but you don't bring your faith down there. And so you get right back up, and your flesh and your palm and walk right back to the seat with you. <laughs> Deliverance, going off of Christ, give God a hand. <laughs> so I want to admonish you to keep believing. Regardless of the picture, regardless of the circumstances, stay encouraged. Can I help you and remind you? You may come in faith today. He might not do it right then. See, I got to protect me and I got to protect God from you. He may not do it. He may say, nope, this ain't going to happen to next year. But I want to see if she or he keeps showing up. I want to they see if they're going to keep the papers open. I mean, the book open. I want to see if they're going to stay persistent. I want to see if they're going to stay diligent. I want to see if they're going to continue to stay in love. If they're going to get bitter. If they're going to get better. See, God also, he knows you, but he has to reveal him, He has to reveal you to you. Because we can think we somewhere and we ain't. Oh, my God, my baby makes me understand that. You can think you somewhere and you ain't. That's why the blessing is in remembrance. A whole lot of substance and principles, y'all. 
As I teach and I taught Pastor Dean him, my God, your gift means nothing to God if the gift ain't submitted to God. Even though God gave you the gift, students, how submitted is it to God? Take it off the students. Grown folks, you're gifted. You're talented. Is your gifts and talents submitted to God, though? You're educated. Is your education submitted to God? Everything goes back to God. All that we are is because of God. All that we will have is because of God. All that we shall become is because of God. Naked we came, naked we shall go. Push in faith, and last one, push with focus. Please write that down right there. Focus will keep you on the right path. Focus will help you push past hurting people and hateful people. Come on, somebody. Focus, my God. Focus. Ah, it's a powerful word in the English verbiage. Focus. Focus. Many of us can't get our healing because we're not focused. Really, our mind is already shifted to what we're going to do at the church. We're not even in the house of the Lord. Like, we're going to make it out the doors. We don't know that. It's that simplistic. You don't know if we're going to make it out the door. I'm getting ready to give it out the call, but who said we're going to make it? He may come before the end. See, we quote stuff, but do you really have an understanding of what we're saying? The twinkling. That's before you and I can blink. We'll be in our rightful place. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So make sure that you're ready. Make sure, and uh, uh, before I get this, uh, you don't have to live defeated lives. You are victorious. Jesus bowed his head and breathed his last, and he said, it is finished. Everything that you need to live this life, God has given to you. And whatever ain't already on the inside of you, he got people assigned to your life to help you get it. All you got to do is move in faith. All I got to do is stay persistent, stay committed, stay hungry. Make sure we constantly allowing the spirit of the living God to work on our character, work on our lives, and keep pushing. Some of y'all has to shift. Some of you have shifted, but you ain't pushed. You didn't move away, but you ain't pushed towards the, the solution. You done made changes. You done got out that house. You got this house. You got this apartment. You moved from south to north, north to south. You done did all the physical re re relocation, but you ain't did the spiritual relocation. Mm. Point three, she found her permanent prescription. <laughs> Whoo, my God. I don't have number one thing for you. Everything else was temporary, church. She had temporary, temporary, I want you to know this, temporary relief never satisfies. Temporary relief never satisfies. You have to keep pushing until you reach Jesus. Jesus is the solution to whatever issue that you and I have. Jesus is the solution. She spent her last dime searching for her cure. She suffered much shame and embarrassment. She became physically weak and had to live her days in loneliness and misery. She had weeped many, many hours, I can imagine, and many, many days. She had gone everywhere and tried everything recommended to her. And then, somebody say, and then. Amen. Come on, say, and then. Say it one more time, and then she came to Jesus, and everything changed. 1.15 in the morning, Minister Melvin, everything changed. Some of us can remember when we came to Jesus. Some of us has came to Jesus. And we have overcame a lot of things. But there's still some hang-ups and habits and hurts. And some things that we need from God. 
It may be somebody here today that has really never accepted Christ in a real way. That's willing and ready to give their life to Christ. There may be someone online looking that is ready to give their life to Christ. God may have said something to you that has resonated with you. God wants to move the body of Christ as a whole around the world from casual Sunday to significant relationship. You may be here today under the sound of my voice and you have a casual relationship with Christ. It really has no substance. When you read, you really get nothing out of it. When you pray, you really get nothing out of it. Even when you come to church, it's like you're here, but you're not really getting nothing out of it. Can I encourage you? You got to look within before you look without. Because sometimes we can be so bitter, we can be so hurt, we can be so angry to where can't nothing penetrate us. God is ready to meet you. But you're going to have to shift and you're going to have to push. You're going to have to make up your mind that I'm done with depending on everybody and everything for what only God can do. Every head bow. If you have never accepted Christ and you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to take your time and think about some of the things that the Spirit of the living God has said. You know you've been around a church, but you ain't 100% sure that if something happened, that you're going on. to stand before God and her job well done, my good and faithful servant. The Bible says that God always give warning before destruction. God has come today to encourage and add warn the church at the same time. What you need, only Jesus can do. Whatever heartache, whatever pain, whatever broken heart, bad relationship, kids problems, financial problems, physical problems, whatever you need, get to Jesus. You may have never accepted Christ and you want to give your life to Christ. If that's you, can you do me the honor? Why well, not me? Can you do yourself and God the honor? And raise your hand. If you want to give your life to Christ, you want to know for sure. And you said, I'm ready. I ain't perfect. I got a lot of problems, but I'm ready. If that's you, raise your hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Come on. Uh, I got problems. My life is messed up. I've been trying to manage my life. I've been trying to control my life, uh, but I'm tired, and I want to give my life to Christ. Is that you? Please raise your hand. Thank you for that hand. Thank you for those hands. Ah. Thank you. We talking about people that want to commit to Christ at another level. They want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am in right standing with God. Can I help you? Righteousness is just a legal term that means right standing with God. Right standing with God. So for those that want to give their life to Christ for the very first time and you raise your hand, and you ready to shift and push and you ain't worried about people, can you please make your way down to the front so that we can pray and make sure that we take care of that business. Come. Come down. Come down. Stand on my right track. Oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
tired. I've been dealing with this for 12 long years. I've been casually going to church. I've been getting by on grace and mercy and I'm ready to have an impactful walk with Christ. Is that you? I got a few more seconds. Is that you? Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Now these has come to give their life to Christ. My God, you kept your word. made you come because when you give your life to Christ it's for keeps after you make the confession you have to mix the confession everyone with belief belief pushes you to a transformation lifestyle belief means that you're not perfect but I'm stuff I'm struggling with I'm willing to get help with and I'm willing to move forward hallelujah thank you Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Let me shake your hand, my brother. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my God. Let me shake your hand, son. Look at me. You're not your mistakes. Boy, you show his hands. Not your failures. The true substance of a man is internal, not external. Character, loyalty, humbleness, faithfulness. A kingdom man looks within. And when he allows God to change within, it shows up external. Who you are has nothing to do with what you do externally. Who you are has everything to do with your internal connectivity to Jesus. Stretch your hands towards these. Hallelujah. For some of those that's praying, just pray a little bit. Lord, I thank you for these that has responded to your voice. Father God, each one of them take any bitterness, the heart of stone out and put all the flesh of your word can fall. Like it has been on fertile soil. Lord, we're getting ready to make a confession unto you. You told us in your word if we confess with our mouth and believe within our heart, we shall be saved. It's real simple. It's not complicated. The only thing that makes it complicated is when we don't come in faith. But I'm believing, Father God, that they have come in faith because you have laid it out there, Father God, in the Spirit and said, come and come by faith. Oh my God, so Lord, I just thank you that these have responded by faith. So everyone at the altar, please raise your hands in the earth and just repeat this after me. It's real simple. It's not difficult. But whatever you do, pray it by faith. Don't just say it because the pastor say say it. Say it because your life depends on it. Your children depends on it. Your grandchildren depends on it. Your health, your future, your destiny depends on these words. Amen, woman of God. Y'all need to understand this is real kingdom business. This ain't church business today, baby. This is kingdom business. You are getting ready to get connected to the king, not church. I can't get nobody to say nothing right to you. 
So everyone at the side of my voice, repeat out to me, Father, first of all, thank you for allowing me to see another day. Father, I really believe that you died and that you rose. And now you are seated in the heavenly places. Father, I recognize that I cannot do it without you. Father, I'm asking that you come into my life. And I don't want you just to be Savior. I want you to be Lord. I confess before these believers that I accept Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Father, forgive me for all of my sins. Father, help me to forgive myself. This day, I am a new creation. Father, change my passions. Change my desires. Increase my hunger. Increase my thirst to want to know you. Today, marks history. Today, I'm a born again believer. I take a stand for Jesus. Thank you for saving me. Thank you even for delivering me. This day forward, I vow that I will seek you. I will pursue you. I will stay focused on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. Let's give God a hand. Now let me give y'all some instructions with this. I tend to do this. Not everybody do this, but I want you to know. Because after you make this confession, now God needs to seal it. But you have to allow God to conceal. Son, I'm talking. You have to allow God to conceal the confession. It's one thing to confess and repeat the sinner's prayer as the scripture among ourselves to do. But you have to seal it within your own belief system. We made a statement that, Lord, I am forgiven of all of my sins. Everything. Listen to me. Everything. And I am a new creation internally. That means the same way you walked up in there, the same clothes you walked up in there, the same shoes you have, my God, you're going to walk out of them with them same shoes. But internally, your spirit has come and connected if you pray by faith to God. And so then you have to do what I had to do in prison. This here is your focus going forward. Because if you don't stay connected to this, everything that you just prayed, everything that you just confessed, you won't see no manifestation in your life. You have to make a decision that going forward. If you live in Tulsa, if you don't have a church home, that you need to be connected to church. Let me kill this myth. People are saying, you don't have to have go to church to have a relationship with God. Show me that in the Bible. Show me in the word of God where it said, I'm talking to them and y'all out there. Well, you don't have to have go to church to have a relationship with God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says not to forsake, Hebrews 10, 25, not to forsake the assembly of gathering yourselves in the manner that some is doing. People that don't value the house of the Lord, I question, are they really born again? Because you need each other in God's kingdom to survive. A seed does not grow on top of the dirt, it grows under the dirt. If the seed needs to grow up under the dirt and it needs the moisture and the darkness to grow, what makes you think you don't need people to help you grow? So do away with that starting now. But I ain't got to go to church. I expect to see you if you're not at work. Seven o'clock on Wednesdays if you're hungry. Definitely back next Sunday if the Lord delay is coming at 11 o'clock. Because if not, the word of God says, as soon as the word of God is planted in your life, the devil is waiting right outside them doors to snatch everything that just happened in your life. So the Bible says, guard your heart 
It's like you guard your children when you get for the ladies up here that, that have your when you push your baby out, you hold your baby and you just hold her. You got to guard your salvation. You got to guard what God just did. That means you got to be willing to let go of some people. You can't go everywhere you used to go. You can't do everything you used to do. Change not gonna happen overnight, but I guarantee you, if you open up this Bible and you stay connected to the body of Christ, oh my God, and you begin to make some changes immediately, you will begin to see, my God, some manifestations of the spiritual realm in your life. The peace that has escaped you, the pain that brought you to God, my God, the stuff God will begin to wash and cleanse over a period of time. You're not the same person if you pray by faith. I hate to say it, but this happens all the time all around the country. They come, they think this is all I got to do is this point right here. I'm just a shepherd that understands that I got to take you all the way in. This is what we're doing. You don't get to disconnect. Open up your Bible. If you need a Bible, see one of these that's standing up here. We make sure you have a Bible. But I expect to see you. Not because I need you to be joining this church. Because your life depends on your relationship with God. So those sitting out there, but you ever hurt, whatever pain, whatever scar, whatever you got to give, come stand with these new believers. Whatever you need to give to Jesus. See, all y'all that's standing up here that just gave your life to Christ, now turn around and look at all the people that just came. Look at all the people. Everybody turn. We are all in this together. Every hurt, every pain, every scar. So half of the church that remain has something that we need to bring to Jesus, including me. Everybody look around. So I don't want none of us to suffer in silence. I don't want none of us to attend this church on a regular basis, Monday night discipleship, Wednesday night Bible study, and Sunday morning service, and yet we suffer in silence because we won't open up our mouth. Uh, we, we, we casually connect with the body. As you can see, ain't nobody got no stones to throw at nobody in this church. We all are in desperate. Desperate need for Jesus. All of us. All of us. All of us. Father God, I thank you for the body. As I decree and I declare your word over this body, Lord, I thank you that they responded to your voice. I was just a vessel on this day that you chose to use. Now, Father God, I'm praying that you meet them right where they're at, Lord. We thank you for those that has committed their life to you for the very first time, and we also thank you for those that has brought their pains, their hang-ups, and their habits to you. Father God, this afternoon, standing in need of you to move. Father God, as we stand before your throne, we ask that you forgive us for blocking and tying up your hands, hindering you from moving in our life, hindering you from fixing the things that is troubling us and hurting us. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, that they shift and push towards you. That they seek, Father God, to apprehend and be apprehended by you. Father God, that you become Lord and Savior in all of our lives, Father God. Lord, I pray that as they have come by faith, that they begin to accept some things you're going to do immediately. Other things, Father God, will be a process. So, Father God, give them faith and patience to go through the process of restoration, process of healing. Oh, my God, process of cleansing. Oh, don't let them faint, Father God, in due season they shall reap that what they came and asked you for, Lord. Mm. So I thank you for a hedge of protection around these sheep, Father God. 
keep them and protect them from wolves. Oh, protect them even from their own selves, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Father God, we come back to you like the woman with the issue of blood. We have nowhere else to go but to you. We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We choose you. Oh, my God. We give ourselves away. We give ourselves away. Everyone that has come to the altar, I want you to stop and think about something or some things that you need to give to God. You can, under your breath, say, God, I'm giving you this, 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 and this. And then I'm going to release you. Think about what you came to give to God. Think about it. Tell God in your mind, because he knows your mind. I'm going to give you this, the sexual sin, the, the fornication, whatever it is, uh, whatever, 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 whatever. I'm giving you this, and I'm giving you this. Name it. Don't just play with it. Name it. Have some tenacity about what you're doing. Be intentional about what you're doing. Name those things. For some of us men, we need to learn how to, we need to learn how to love our wives again. So many things that we need as a people. Forgiveness, all that stuff. Name it. Pick us up, D. Pick us up. Come on, pick us up. Come on, come on. What you free? Pick us up. What do you need? Name it. Name it. Restoration. Restoration back to God. Restoration back to, to the house of the Lord. Restoration back to my relationships. Whatever it is. Any addiction, habits, hangers, whatever it is. Name it. Name it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Release. After you name it, release it. After you name it, release it. Ah, oba shike la la After you name it, give it to God. Remember, she took her pain to Jesus, and she got healed without Jesus ever touching her. He never put his hands on her, my God, but her faith caused her to get healed. Oh, my God, her faith, my God. God never touched her. He never laid his hands on her, but her faith is going to take faith. I promise you, that what you're naming, that what you believe in God for is going to take faith. If not, you'll walk right out of with the same thing you just named. Faith, 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 faith. Increase it, increase it, increase it, increase it. Faith, faith, faith. Father God, as I get ready to release the sheep, I pray as I stated, Father God, that you protect them, that they go in peace, that you be a wall of protection around them, that we realize as of today that all of us, are a mess on our way to progress. And we all need each other. That's the great Juanita Byman said. We need each other to survive. So, Father God, I thank you for this. Bless their hearts, bless their lives, and bless the rest of their day. Father, I pray that they all return back for those that can on this Wednesday at 6 o'clock prayer or 7 o'clock Bible study. I release them into your care, Father. I believe my assignment is up for the day. Now, Father God, I give them to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. Hug your brother and your sister. Hug your brother and your sister. Hug your brother and your sister.